Hey there everyone, it's Pat from Fronius and today I'm gonna to show you how to commission a snap inverter. So the first thing you wanna do is get in front of your inverter and what you're gonna do is activate the Wi-Fi access point. So to do that, press this third button here and you'll go to the home screen. Once you're at the home screen, you can press either the first or the second button to scroll either left or right. And what we're looking for is a menu that is a spanner and a screwdriver symbol together. Then press the fourth button to access the setup menu. Scroll down to Wi-Fi access point by pressing the second button and then press the fourth button again to enter. Press the fourth button again and then we'll activate the Wi-Fi access point. You can now see that the Wi-Fi access point is active. The next step is to connect to the inverter's Wi-Fi access point using a smart device such as a smartphone or a tablet. Alternatively, you can connect to it with a laptop. That's what I'm doing today, so I'm using my laptop. And what I need to do is find the available Wi-Fi networks on my laptop. The way you access these Wi-Fi networks will change depending on the device that you're using. On my laptop, I click here. The Wi-Fi access point must be active for you to see it here in the list of available Wi-Fi networks. And to check that, you can look at the inverter display screen and it should say active. And you will see this set of numbers below it, which will begin with 240, or 239. Now on my laptop, I'm looking for a Wi-Fi network with that same set of numbers you can see on the display screen of the inverter. So I can see it there. So I'll select it, and the password is the same for all of our snap inverters. It's 12345678. Once you've connected your device to the inverter's Wi-Fi access point, open up a web browser and head to the following IP address, 192.168.250.181. Here it's asking you if you wanna download our app, which you could use on a smartphone or a tablet to do the commissioning process. However, in our case, I'm using my laptop, so I'm not gonna do that. I'll press OK. And then we wanna enter the SolarWeb wizard. Here it's asking you to set a name for the system, so I'm gonna call it Test. Then you can put in your feed-in tariff and grid supply tariff. So we can select AUD here as we're in Australia, and just note these tariffs are in dollar format. So that feed-in tariff you can see is 12 cents per kilowatt hour, and that grid supply tariff is 25 cents per kilowatt hour. It's really important to make sure that the time settings are correct here. So make sure you select the correct time zone and check that the time and date are correct. I can see that all those details are fine, so I'll press forward. Here it's asking you to enter the amount of PV that's connected to your inverter and enter this in watts. So if you had three kilowatts of panels attached, you'd put 3000 here. I'll put that in as an example and press forward. In this pop-up window are some terms and conditions. Please have a read through this, and then if you agree, press accept to proceed. This part is where you're gonna choose the Wi-Fi network to connect your inverter to, meaning you'd be connecting your inverter to the modem in your premises. You can see there's three different options or connection modes here. So there's local network via access point, SolarWeb via WLAN and SolarWeb via LAN. We're doing a Wi-Fi connection today, so the one we want to select is this one, SolarWeb via WLAN. I can see it's already selected there, so that's all good. Also make sure that this box down here is ticked, which says send data to the Fronius SolarWeb. And if you want to see your nighttime data, then tick this other box, which says logging during nighttime hours. Again, it's giving you some terms and conditions. Please have a read through this, and then if you agree, press accept to proceed. Now all available Wi-Fi networks are shown in this box on the right. You need to find your home Wi-Fi network in this list. You can scroll down using this arrow here, and if you can't see your home Wi-Fi network, try refreshing the list by pressing this button here. Or it may be that the Wi-Fi signal from your modem is too low. So try to move your modem a little bit closer to the inverter if that's possible. Some Wi-Fi extenders can work, 
but there may be some settings that need to be configured depending on the one you choose. And just be aware, you cannot use five gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. Also make sure that your home Wi-Fi network has at least two bars of reception. So that's these bars here. The Wi-Fi network that I'm connecting to today is called customer. So I can see it there and it has at least two bars of reception. So that's all good. And I'll select that by clicking on it and then press set down here. Then I'll enter in the password for the network, which is test12345. We always recommend pressing show password to make sure that you've entered in your details correctly. Then press save. I can see it is saved now, so I'll press connect. Okay, it's saying internet is available. It says yes here, which is good. If it did not say yes, then it may be that you have some firewall settings on your device that need to be changed. Down here, it says, please change your network to continue the setup wizard. So in the previous step, what we did was we connected the inverter to my home Wi-Fi network, which is called customer. Now in this part, there are two steps there. The first step is to connect your smart device, or in my case, I'm connecting my laptop to that same home Wi-Fi network. And then the second step is to click on this link. So the first bit, I'll open up the Wi-Fi networks on my laptop again, and I'll search for that Wi-Fi network, which is called customer. I can see it there. So I'll put in the password, which was test12345, and then connect to it. My laptop is now connected to that Wi-Fi network. And now the second step, I just have to click on that link there. It'll open up a new window. It says internet is available, so it says yes there, which is all good. Depending on the software version you have, it'll either show you this table with this information, or if you have an older software, you might not be able to see this table, but it will always give you this message, which is in this box down here. It's saying I'm in the configured network of the system monitoring, and I can continue using the wizard. So I'll click forward. Here it's asking me to set a password for the username admin. So I'm gonna make it test123. Please remember this password, maybe write it down and keep it somewhere safe. Then press forward. The next step is to add the system to SolarWeb, our online monitoring portal. It's asking you for permission to store cookies on your device. Have a read through this. And if you agree, press accept. Just note you need to have a SolarWeb account to add the system to SolarWeb. If you have an account, then you can log in by clicking here. If you don't have an account, then you can click here and register one. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'll click here. Click register now. Your SolarWeb account will be linked to an email address. So enter in the email that you wanna use. And then set a password. The password needs to have at least one digit, one lowercase letter, and one of their special characters. I'm gonna make it SolarWeb with a capital S, then I'll put in the number one and a hashtag. Then tick this box, which says I'm not a robot. And it's asking you there to agree to Fronius's data privacy statement. You can read it by clicking on the underlined writing. And if you agree, tick this circle and then press register now. You will then receive a confirmation email to that email address you put in. So I'll open up the email I used There it is, so I'll open it. And you need to click that link to activate your account. Then to finalize your registration, you need to log into SolarWeb, so I'll press login. So log in here with the password that you saved before. It 
says there by signing in, you agree to Fronius's data privacy statement. So you can read it again by clicking on that underlined writing. And if you agree, go ahead and press login. You can choose what type of customer you are. I'll leave it as private customer and press continue. Then fill out all the fields, so your personal details, address and so forth. Then press next. If you want to subscribe to any of the newsletters for our three business units, you can click on these. It's giving you an option there to subscribe to SolarWeb product information. And then once again, it's asking you to agree to Fronius's data privacy statement. So if you agree, you can go ahead and press submit. Check the time zone settings and also select what date and time format you want. There's a link to some terms and conditions which can be read by clicking on the blue writing there. And if you accept, tick the box and then press save. Check the details there and enter in anything that's missing. And then press submit. In this pop-up window, there's a link to find out more information about SolarWeb Premium, our paid subscription-based version of SolarWeb. And there's also an option to go purchase it. I'll just close that. And now you're done with setting up SolarWeb. And this is what we call the dashboard. The inverter that I've commissioned isn't wired up to anything, so that's why I can't see any data here. Just to show you quickly what the dashboard would look like on a real system, so here it is. So you can see up here on what we call the bubble chart, how much power is being produced by the system, how much power is being consumed on the site. We can also see how much power is being drawn from the grid or being fed back into the grid. So the way that these circles are moving shows the direction of the power flow. But navigating through SolarWeb is a separate topic, so I'll leave that to another time.